Hi guys, what's up? This is uh, XRK971 and uh, I am going to show you today how to install and set up your TPA3255 ready to run amplifier board. Um, what you'll receive is a board basically that's going to be like this and I'm going to show you basically how to go through, set it up and how to connect it to your amplifier and get it working the first time. Uh, some basic uh, precautions. Uh, this is a static sensitive device, so first I would recommend that you discharge your fingers onto some grounded objects such as the chassis that I have right now, which is, um, you know, grounded. And uh, we'll proceed. So I'm, I have a board here that's been installed already, but I'm going to show you how to start this basically from the beginning. So what you'll receive is your amplifier. It's going to be packaged in something like this. So first remove the bubble wrap. Take your amplifier out of the anti-static bag. And you will actually have uh, these dip switches. They'll be preset for you already, but I will show you how to do it just in case uh, you want to change the settings at some other time. Um, in the manual, you will see that um, the First, four switches need to be flipped to the left, all the way down, except the very bottom, you leave it on the right. So the top three to the right, the next four to the left, and the one on the bottom to the right. So this mode should be basically stereo BTL or bridge tide load. Uh, next up is you will want to install the included thermal heat sink block that uh, I, I give you, you with this amplifier. Uh, take one of these, and what you're going to do is apply a tiny bit of thermal grease right where the pad is, right here. Like that. And I use CPU cooler grease, it works pretty well. And what you're going to need is a couple of M3, um, I like, you know, hex head cap screws. I believe these are 12 millimeters long. Um, you'll probably need at least uh, 12 because uh, in order to get the, the reach in a good depth. So what you want to do is take the, uh, the screws, put them through these two holes in the top here, where the heat sink mounts are, okay? Holding onto those with your fingers, flip the board over, take the heat sink spacer block, and sort of slip it on, I think I dropped one of the screws there. And you'll want to screw this in. We'll replace the other one in a second here. I think I'm getting one to go in. Find the other screw here. Put it on. You're gonna have to jiggle it around a little bit to get it to go in there. And here, you want to be careful flip it over and you want to screw it in so that it gently comes down very evenly. You don't want it cocked left or right. You want it to come down so that it's flat. So each side you want to do just a little bit at a time until it's sort of snug and then move to the other side and alternate back and forth, okay? And every now and then you want to look down at the gap and make sure that it's level. And if it's not, you might want to tighten and or loosen one, one side or the other until it is level. And you want it just a little bit snug. I mean, barely finger tight. I mean, if you want too much, it'll, it'll damage the chip, okay? You just want to have a good thermal contact between that block and the chip itself. And I'm looking down here, and it looks like it's actually cocked a little bit, so I'm going to have to loosen this just a tad and then tighten this other one here. I don't know if you can see it, but... The block should be parallel to the board. Hopefully you can see it there. Now once we've got that done, the surface here is electrical ground to the board, so you want to isolate that from your amplifier chassis. So what I have is I'm going to use a silicone uh, thermal spacer pad. It's right here already. It's already mounted on the board. Uh, I mean on the CPU, cha um, the chassis. Um, you will want 10 millimeter M3 brass standoffs, okay? And the height is critical because the 10 millimeter height plus the stack up height of this and the chip 
and the silicone spacer will be a perfect match so that you can perform a couple of functions. It'll hold it steady and give you a nice thermal bond. So now what we do is we just simply put this on and screw it in. And uh, I can feel that it's actually touching the sticky silicone already, so it's actually kind of snug. And you know, I, I did calculate this so that it would be a precise stack up height. Then you want to use some M3 screws down onto the corners. Um, I particularly like these little button head ones with a, a hex cap screw. They're easy to use and they look really nice actually. So nice thing about socket cap screws is the uh, that screwdriver head doesn't slip off when you're in a tight space like this. Okay, and then screw each of these down loosely at first and then we'll snug them in um, evenly later. Oops, I dropped here. Not lining up, so I'm going to loosen these a little bit here. There we go. Okay, that's all in now. And then now we snug them all down. Okay. So now what we should have is a nice thermal contact on that heat sink pad. All right. Next thing is let's connect everything up. Uh, what you should have is a 15 volt power supply from your uh, you know, switch mode power supply or whatever you're using, but you'll need a Molex KK connector and I include one of these with each amp. Um, you see the ramp here, these are little tabs. You want the positive to be on this side here, so facing the front of the board. So this is gonna go here. So this is the new connection and we're using an external 15 volt power supply because the little DC to DC buck converter is basically no longer available um, due to supply chain issues. Other things we're going to want to connect are um, chassis earth ground right here. And that's going to a star point chassis ground right here that I have going to the IEC ground. Uh, next thing you want, and I include one of these connectors that you guys can make, is the uh, power supply. Um, and it's a Molex Mini Fit 4 pin. Uh, the two positive ones are the ones away from the uh, the tab and the negative the ground is actually the one closest to the tab so that's here and we snap that in okay speaker connects you can either use the molex mini fit six pins which i also include in, in the kit with you for your amp or i like to use fastons and for fastons um so this is for instance this channel on this side technically if you're looking at the amp from the front that would be the left channel Okay, and left channel positive is the one here, this is channel A, negative is channel B. The right speaker is just flipped, so C would be the one in the back, it's positive, and D is negative, okay? So these are going to the speaker binding posts. So we've got power, we've got ground, we've got speakers, we've got the external 15 volts. Those are really what you need. And then now for your audio input, uh, if you're using, happen to be using a BTSB, you know, balanced buffer, um, the thing to note is that the inputs cross. So if, if this is the left out, the left in is on the opposite diagonal side. So left it would do over here. And you'll need a three pin connector for that. And it's a three, uh, three pin Molex KK. And then so the right channel would be here. Okay, so the wires are going to cross as you can see. Um, optional, if you want, if you've got some LED indicators like I have here, this shows you, you know, some status lights, for instance, uh, thermal shutdown or clipping and things like that. So that goes here and that's two different LEDs. Um, and then finally, if you want a reset switch, uh, also happens to be a pretty good mute switch too. It's just a simple, uh, you know, momentary push button switch that goes here. So if you push this button, it'll reset the amp. And as long as you have it held down, it'll actually mute the amp too. So that's another good use for it. Uh, sometimes that's handy for, for muting the amp while you're hot plugging stuff in and out. Uh, in my chassis here, I've, I'm using a micro audio uh, SMP S630SO. That's SO stands for single output. 
and this one is I think designed for 51 volts output uh, and it has a built-in you know plus or minus 15 volt uh, power supply which comes on and that was real handy for powering this and that's about basically it so we've got um, it adds up quickly but there are 10 connections here um, for, for everything involved but really to get going you need power you should have ground to the chassis you should have your speakers and you need your audio input okay that's basically it uh, and as I mentioned that's uh, you know so the next thing is uh, if you power it up make sure that you know you've got the polarities cl correct correct here uh, I'm gonna plug this in and first uh, if I turn it on we're just turning on the power supply and then now if I uh, turn on the uh, push button, which then actually energizes this here, we should see two green LEDs come on. And that would signify that everything's working. And there it is. And these two LEDs indicate that you have uh, 15 volts coming in, which is then turned to 12 volts and 3.3 volts. The amplifier needs both in order to function because it's got an you know, external requirements for 12 volts and 3.3 volts. Uh, right now, uh, it should be ready to go. So um, we could try listening to some music here on it. Uh, I've actually got the speakers hooked up. Let me turn off the other amplifier that's playing some background music right now. And we can see some, hear some sound coming out. So give me a second here. All right, so um, I think it's actually playing. Yep, you can hear it. Oops. So let's test the reset button. Music goes off. Let go. Should come back on. Power down, comes down. Um, some of you had some questions about what happens with these LEDs. So if you take a look quickly here, as you powered on, one of them will flash real quickly. See that? I believe the other one is for a thermal shutdown. So we've uh, verified that this amp works and everything's good. And that's basically how you set this amplifier up. I uh, hope that uh, was helpful for you, and uh, let me know if you've got any questions. Go ahead and feel free to ask in the thread. Uh, thanks for buying the SAMP, and appreciate your patronage.